How's it going everyone? Welcome to the Code Lab channel. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in the advanced CSS series and in this video I'm going to be creating this really cool animated text. So as you can see when you take a look at the animation it's displaying three different messages. So it's saying hello world, hello I'm Code Lab and then on both sides the text animates to ask a question of how are you. So a pretty cool animation done with only HTML and CSS so no JavaScript at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is just open this up with live server so we have a blank uh, browser there. So the markup for this animation is pretty simple. All we're going to need is a div of the class of uh, content container. Inside of this div we're going to have two um, unordered lists. So we're going to say ul li and we're just going to have uh, two bits of text. And for the ul we're just going to have a class of uh, content container list one and then for the list items we're just going to have um, how there and hello and then what we're going to do is just duplicate this and for list item two and we're going to include one more list item here so the first bit of text is world second bit of text is I'm code lab and the last bit of text here is are you for that question of how are you so that's literally it for the markup what I'm going to do now is just link to our style sheet and then uh, let's head into the style sheet so the first thing I'm going to do is just grab the body tag and I'm going to set a uh, width to be 100% uh, height to be 100% and then a background color of uh, let's say 344.95e which will give us a nice gray background and then also set the position to fixed because we're going to be using flexbox now to center all of this so say display flex justify content to the center horizontally and then vertically we'll use a line items which will line it to the center and then let's also make the uh, color of the text to white uh, font size 35 pixels and then let's just also add a bit of letter space in between them so we'll say about three pixels and then the next thing we'll do now is grab the uh, content container and with this as well we're going to be using a uh, display flex so they um, stack up next to each other and font weight let's make it about 600 and then uh, height of this we want it to be 40 pixels and the width of this to be 400 pixels and then the padding let's just add a bit of padding on the left and right so we'll say about 10 pixels and then let's also um, add a position of relative because we're going to be positioning the onward lists uh, absolute inside of this so uh, one more thing I need to do is uh, add a box shadow so we say uh, zero and then negative five pixels so I can put it at the top of the um, content there and then let's make it blurry and then let's also reduce its size and then we'll make the color dark gray and then we'll do uh, the same thing again but for the bottom so instead of negative five pixels we just say five pixels three pixels again for the blur and then negative three pixels and then have another dark gray here now the next thing I'm going to do is just give some style into both of the unordered list there so I'm going to grab uh, content container list one duplicate this because they're pretty much going to have the same style in uh, but the first bit is just make this a position of absolute and then uh, what I also want to do is just remove those bullet points so list style none and 
I'll do the same thing for the uh, second unordered list. Now for the second unordered list, I'm just gonna say right, let's say about 10 pixels from the right. So it moves it to the side, so now we can both see them. And then what I wanna do now for both of these is add a margin top of zero. So what that will do, we'll just push both of the unordered lists to the uh, top of their container, which is pretty much exactly where the box shadow is. Now for the first uh, unordered list here, we take a look at the original you can see it starts on hello so what we want to do is actually push this up um, from the top negative 40 pixels so as you can see when i do that in the browser um, the unordered list is being pushed up uh, by 40 pixels so that's all we're going to need for the general styling now we're going to move on to the actual animation now the way I'm going to be animating this is using the animation property combined with the at keyframes rule which I will explain as I'm going along but if you guys want a more in-depth look at this property and the at keyframes rule I do have a bite size series on CSS animation which goes into a lot more detail if you guys want to check that out. So we're going to create the animation on the second um, unordered list first. So the first thing we're going to need is the animation property. Now the animation property has many different properties. But the three that we're going to need is the animation name, the animation duration, and the animation iteration count. So first we'll do the animation name. And we'll call this one scroll. And then we're going to need to define a duration for the animation. So we'll say animation duration and make it five seconds long. And then the next thing we're going to need here is the animation iteration count, which essentially is just how many times we want this animation to run. And for this example, we're gonna just make it run infinitely. So as you can see, when I do type in animation, there's all these different um, animation properties. And we can actually write all of this out just by writing animation and then the name first. So scroll, five seconds long, and we want it to run infinitely. So um, that's pretty much the shorthand for the animation property. But I do recommend checking out all of the um, animation properties before going straight to the shorthand. So we've got our animation now, we've named it and we've said how long we want it to be and how many times we want it to run. We now need this second part of the equation and that is the at keyframes rule. So I'm just gonna go underneath the class here and we're gonna type at keyframes. Now this identifier thing you see here is just gonna be the name of our animation, which in our example is scroll. Now what the keyframes at rule does here is determine what styles an element will have at a given time. So they're essentially responsible for controlling intermediate stages of an animation. And this just allows for a much greater control of an animation's progress. So using the keyframe rule here, the animation is created gradually changing from one style to another. But the real beauty of this is that you can actually change the styles as many times as you want. And to do that, we use percentages. So I'm gonna write in here 0%, comma, 100%. So this zero to 100% here is the whole length of our animation. But again, the beauty with the keyframes is that we can define as many styles as we want at any point within the zero to 100%. So for our second unordered list here, you can see we have three lines. We've got the word for world, I'm code lab, and the question, are you? So in our keyframes here, we're gonna need four breakpoints. So the first breakpoint is one we've already written. And we wanna say inside of this breakpoint, we wanna grab the transform property, and then we're gonna grab the translate 3D function. Now what this function does is reposition an element in a 3D space and inside of this function it takes three values. So the first value is the X axis, which we want to be at zero. The second value is the Y axis, which again we want to be at zero. And the third value is the Z index. Now you won't actually be able to see this, but this is essentially just an angle, which is either closer to you or farther away from you, which again we're gonna be placing at zero. So what we're saying with this waypoint is that our animation at the start and at the end we want it to be in the exact same position it is in now now what we can do here is actually add more waypoints inside of this keyframe so after the zero percent at the ten percent i also want these um, rules to apply which again is just keeping everything in the exact same position it is now but the next point i want the animation to actually show the second line which is the i'm code lab text so i'm going to start that at 15 percent of the animation till about 30% is how long I want this animation uh, to last for. So again, we're gonna grab the transform property, translate 3D, uh, zero on the X, but we wanna say minus 40 pixels on the uh, Y axis, because we wanna show that second line. And then on the Z index, we want this to be zero. So if you take a look at the screen now, you can see it's actually animating now, and it's showing us that second line. 
And the reason I'm saying 40 pixels here is because this is the um, height of our container there. So I want this to be um, within the parameters of the container. Now after 30%, I want the third line to show us, which is the RU question. So we'll go underneath here and add another waypoint. So at 35% to let's say about 45% of the animation, we again just want to grab the uh, transform translate function and because we want to show um, the third line, we're going to have to make this um, 80 pixels. And if you take a look at the browser now, you can see that animation is pretty much complete. We can now see all of the parts of the text inside the parameters of the container. So what's essentially happening here with the keyframes is that I don't want the animation to actually start till about 10% in the animation. And then around 15% is where I want the animation to start or show the second line. And then at 35%, is where I want the third line to show. And this 5% difference between each of the waypoints is just a brief moment of time that I want each line to have. Now from here, I do want to add one more waypoint because if you take a look at the animation, um, after the RU bit, it's really slow at bringing the um, first line back. So I want that to be sped up. So after the 45%, we'll grab the 50% and then say from 50 to 60%, we'll grab the transform translate again. And then we're just going to say for the Y axis, um, we'll put out zero and this should now be um, much faster. And as you can see now, the animation is sped up, bringing back the first line in the exact same way as the original. So that's how we can use the animation property and the at keyframes rule to create really cool animation. So let's complete this animation now by animating um, the first unordered list. So the first thing we want to do is go inside the uh, class of um, container list one. And we want to grab the, um, we're going to need the animation name, the animation duration and iteration count. So we'll say animation name. We're going to call this uh, scroll once. And then we're going to need a duration. So we'll say uh, animation duration. We'll make this five seconds too. And then an iteration count. So we're just going to say, uh, let's make it infinite. And then we're actually going to use one more um, animation property and we're going to use the animation delay because we want this animation to actually delay slightly before um, taking effect. So we'll say animation delay, we'll delay it by one second. And again, guys, I do advise taking a look at all the animation properties because there are a lot of different ones we can apply to an animation before you just dive into the shorthand here. So we've done the first part of the equation, which is using the animation property. The second part now is using uh, the keyframes at rule. So we'll just go underneath uh, this class here, grab the keyframes at rule. The identifier is the name. So we'll say scroll once. And we'll go inside this keyframe, just scroll down so you can see a bit clearer. Um, so at 0% and 100%, we want this to be in the exact same spot. So transform, translate 3D, zero for the X, zero for the Y, and zero for the uh, Z index. And again, at 10%, we want this to be um, still at the exact same position it is now. Now at 15% to 25% is where I want the animation to take place. So 15 to 25%, transform, translate 3D, uh, zero on the X, and we want to push it down 40 pixels because that's the height of the container. Um, and on the Z index, we want it to be zero. So if you take a look at the browser now, you can see that animation is working, but you can see we're still going to need one more waypoint here because this UL um, takes a quite a long time to go back to its original position. So after the 25%, at 30% to let's say 45%, we'll grab the transform and translate 3d and we'll just put zero on the y so it pushes it back to the hello if you take a look at the uh, browser now you can see the animation is working exactly the same as the original and all we need to do now is the last ingredient which is using the um, overflow property and setting it to hidden on the container so we can't see anything that's outside of the container so if i grab the overflow and we set this to hidden you can see anything outside of the container now isn't visible and we're only able to see the content that's inside of the container. And as you can see guys, the animation now is complete and it's exactly the same as the original and all we really needed was the uh, animation property 
and the keyframes combination to complete and to create this animation. So that's going to be it for this video guys. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you guys are new here, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video.